بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Hello and welcome to a new project on vehicle classification In this project I will take you through all the process of developing a deep learning project for commercial purpose with an industrial level performance So let's assume that you have received a request from a customer to build an artificial intelligence solution to classify different types of vehicles So let's say that the customer mentioned to you that he wants a surveillance system that is able to count the number of cars and the number of motorcycles crossing certain areas using computer vision, for example, and using some, uh, let's say, cameras. Uh, in this simple case, your first task would be to be able to classify two types of objects, uh, motorcycle and motorcycle and cars. And apparently, this is a simple problem because the shape and the features of cars are pretty much different. So we will just need to collect a data set of cars and another of motorcycles to get started. Of course, with only two classes, that would not be a big problem to solve. So let's say that you start to collect your data and suddenly your customer came back to you and told you, hey, uh, it seems that there are different types of motorcycles and different types of cars. And in our application, we need to differentiate between all these different types. So after discussing with the customer, uh, he told you that to consider two types of motorcycles. So here we have a bicycle and uh, motorbikes with which have different shapes and also to consider, let's say, three types of four-wheel vehicles, SUV, sedan, and buses. Of course, there are much more different types, but for the sake of illustration, we'll just consider the following ones, only these five types, bicycle, motorbike, SUV, bus, and sedan. So here the problem starts to be more complex, not only in terms of requirement of data collection, but also we have more classes and there is also a hierarchical parent-to-child relationship between the objects to classify. These kind of relations lead to have more different options on how to build the classifier and also how to collect your data. It is very important to carefully think about this before going deeper in your project because every decision you will take will have an impact on how you treat your problem. So now the first question is how to classify these objects. Should we build different classifiers for example, one classifier per type of object, or should we build one classifier for all objects? Let's see the different options available. A first approach will be to consider a hierarchical classifier. So what does this mean? So here, here it means that uh, in this case, we start building a classifier for the parent types. Okay, let's say we want to classify the vehicle type, and here we have car, and we, here we have motorcycle. Then given that an object for example is a motorcycle we will build a specific classifier for the different types of motorcycle so this will make a second classifier and uh, so here you have bicycle and uh, motorbike and in the same way you will need to build another classifier specifically for the car to classify suv bus and sedan so in total you will end up with having three classifiers one classifier for motorcycle versus car and one classifier for bicycle and motorbikes, and the third classifier for bus, SUV, and sedan. This is not bad, but here we have only three major categories. So this means we have three classifiers. Uh, in the case we have a deeper hierarchy, we will have more classifiers to build, and this might end up to be not very practical. Imagine that you have, for example, 10 categories. In this case, you need to build 10 classifiers, and if you have more, you will have to build more as well. So nonetheless, the hierarchical classifier has its advantages and limitations. The advantage of the hierarchical classifier is that every classifier will be focusing on a small number of classes to recognize. This will make it easier to train and have reasonable requirements in terms of memory and computation. Usually, this kind of classifiers can be trained on one commodity GPU with no major problems. On the other hand, the limitation of this approach is that it will require to develop as many classifiers as parent-to-child relationships in the hierarchy, which will induce making several trainings to develop each model. Then, in the prediction time, you will need to go through several models in the hierarchy to get the classification of a single object. For example, if you want to classify a bus object, you will first need to run it in the first classifier, okay to decide whether it is a motorcycle or car then once it is classified as a car 
you need to execute it through the second classifier to distinguish it from SUV and sedan. And this will increase obviously the prediction time as it goes through a series of predictions. Also, you can fall into a cascade of wrong predictions. For example, if an object is misclassified at the parent level, example, it is a car and is misclassified as a motorcycle, then all the subsequent predictions will naturally go wrong for the subclasses. Another approach would be to develop a flat classifier. In this case, you will develop one classifier for all the different types of vehicles. So all vehicle types, motorbike, bicycle, bus, SUV, and sedan will be considered the same level as one classifier. So in this case, we will have one classifier for the five classes, and we will not consider any kind of parent to child relationship. So is this better solution than the hierarchical classifier? Well, actually we cannot generalize as this pretty much depend on the use case and on the number of classes and different other parameters. So the flat classifier may actually be simpler to build from a design perspective. But from a development perspective, it may be very greedy in terms of computation and memory requirements. So for illustration purposes, imagine that you have, for example, 100 classes. Then your output will be a softmax function with 100 output values. Okay? And this will impact the number of states in the memory and will make it more complex for the classifier to distinguish between object with, within 100 classes. Of course, making distinction between object in two classes is much simpler than making among 100 class or 200 classes. So that's one point to, to consider when building a flat classifier. And also in real world problems, you can even have hundreds of classes and typically you will need supercomputer machines to handle them, e either to build the data set or also to run the training. We will see this later when we move uh, into uh, the next lectures. So also the number of images to consider in one flat classifier will be much larger because in this case you will consider all the images into one as one data set and you will uh, use it for the training. Okay, so the whole data set will be used for the training, whereas in the hierarchical classifier, each classifier will use a subset of images relative to the subclasses for which it will be trained. So in summary, it is an important decision to make in advance before going further. And this depends on the size of your data set, the capabilities of your storage and computation resources, and the complexity of the problem to take. We will see this in more details when doing the training and doing the experiments. But do not worry, I will show you an effective way on how to build your data set to easily develop either hierarchical classifiers or flat classifiers without major changes to the data set itself. And now even in real world classification problems, uh, things can be even much more complex. So let's assume that the customer requests you again to be able to differentiate between the different types of bicycles. And here it tells you that he tells you that there are three types of bicycles let's say racing mountain and bicycle for kids so here if we use a hierarchical classifier we will have to develop one more classifier to differentiate between the type of bicycles and if we use a flat classifier we will have three more classes to differentiate among the others so in both cases the problem complexity will increase so same thing maybe also we need to differentiate between the different types of motorbikes. Okay, you may also consider different types of motorbikes like scooter, chopper, and sport. So again, more classes to consider in our problem. And the same can be done for different type of SUVs or sedan and buses. So you can see that we can go into the hierarchy much, much deeper. And as we add more classes, the things will become much, much more complex, both in terms of data collection and also in terms of computing and storage requirement. So it's possible to go much deeper into the hierarchy and have at the end a large number of classes or classifiers to develop. Now the main question, what is the effective way to create the data set for a maximum efficiency in training, either to develop a flat classifier or to develop a hierarchical classifier? And by the way, this is a very, very important question. So maybe 
several people will create a data set specific to for a flat classifier and then data set specific for hierarchical classifiers but this is not pretty much efficient i will show you a practical tip to create one data set that can be used easily with any kind of classifiers without having to make any changes so let's get started Assume that you want to create a hierarchical classifier. So some people may think to create a data set in this way. So they will collect images for three distinct data sets. So one data set will be, uh, a first data set will be to differentiate between the type of vehicles, car and motorcycle. And then they will collect images to differentiate uh, the different types of cars, bus, SUV, and sedan. And they will create another data set, okay, to differentiate between motorbike and bicycles. So then each data set will be trained separately. And this approach of building the data set is not very efficient because it leads to creating three different data sets. Whereas it's possible to create one reusable data set that can be used for either hierarchical classifier or flat classifier, depending on how you want to load the data and how to assign the labels for your data. Let's see how this can be achieved. Now let us consider the following data set structure, okay, as shown in this slide. So let's say that we have one folder that contains different subfolders, where each subfolder represents one class of a certain level. Let's take an example. For example, in level zero, we have the folder type, okay, or let's say the root folder of the data set. Then in level one, we have two subfolders. We have a subfolder for cars and another subfolder for motorcycle. This is level one. And in level two, for example, under the car subfolder, we have three subfolders, the bus, SUV, and sedan. And the same for motorcycle. We have motorbike and bicycle. So this structure can be used for creating both a flat classifier and a hierarchical classifier. For a flat classifier, we will read the images and assign them labels the same as the name of the leaf node or the leaf folder or the lowest child folder in the hierarchy. For example, if we read an image from the SUV folder, so its label will be just SUV. And in the case of hierarchical classifier, if for example, we want to read an image to classify it as a car and motorcycle, that's also be, that also be, uh, can be very easy. So if we read an image, for example, from the SUV and we want to build a hierarchical classifier, for just car and motorcycles. So in this case, the label of the image in this folder will be just equal to car, okay, which is the parent folder as of SUV. And for example, if you read an image from motorbike here, and you want to assign it a label, so its label will be just motorcycle, which is the name of the parent folder. So I will show you how to develop a method that loads images and assigns them label whether you would like to develop a flat classifier or a hierarchical classifier. We can develop one method, I will show you that. It's one method, and then you, you can play whether you want to assign the labels of the leaf folders or the subfolders or of the parent folders. And in this case, you can actually reuse the whole data set for either building a flat classifier or a hierarchical classifier. So there is one more convention to note with respect to naming the folders. For the parent folder, the name will be, for example, car and motorcycle. So no change with respect to the previous slide. And for the subfolder, you will put both the name of the parent folder and the name of the current folder. For example, here we put car, for example, dash bus for this subfolder. So this means this is the bus subfolder and its parent is car. Okay, we can put here motorcycle dash motorbike. Okay, so this helps to keep the whole hierarchy in the label of the classes for every image, which is very useful later for the prediction and also for the training. So for now, just consider this convention. I will show you how to use it in, uh, in implementation. And you will understand how important it is later for both training and prediction. So let's assume that also you would like to consider a deeper hierarchy here for motorcycle, motorbike. We have scooter, motor, uh, motorbike, chopper, motorbike and sport motorbike. So here when you want to put the name of the folders, you will put motorcycle dash motorbike dash scooter. And here motorcycle dash motorbike dash shopper. So 
this subfolder will contain the information about the parent folder and the grandparent folder as well and this is very helpful even if you go deeper at any level you know the whole the whole hierarchy from from the name of the class although this is just one class but it keeps tracks of all the name of the different classes in the previous folder in the hierarchy so let's see a few examples uh, for the class encoding for every label so here let's say we have the vehicle type this is level 0 and here we have motorbike this is level 1 okay the cycle type itself and here it's the model for example scooter and this is level 2 so same thing for the cars so the first name here uh, in the hierarchy is car this is level 0 the vehicle type the car type here for example it is a bus and the brand for example we can put a brand if we want to go deeper into the hierarchy mercedes or any other thing and of course now uh, what i presented here will be the name of the labels it means the name of the folders and uh, i will add another convention that now for to name every image i will just take the name of the folder and i will add an id for example 0102 so it will be incremental this is just a convention it's not really necessary or mandatory to name the images but you will see later on it's it's pretty much useful and makes the structure of the images uh, much clearer later on for pre-processing and also for processing the data set so this was just an introduction about how to analyze a classification problem and now let's get started with the practical aspects and we are going to create a data set for this particular use case for differentiating between different type of cars and different types of motorcycles okay see you in the next lecture